Welcome back to Computer Science 4303. Um, we're getting toward the end of the course now. Uh, today is not so much a lecture as it is uh, just information for, for you all. Um, first, I'm going to talk about the project demo, which is the next uh, deadline that's coming up. And also, I want to show some of the cool um, assignment three solutions for which people uh, did bonus work and Perl and noise and all that kind of cool stuff. So what I've done is I've updated the project, the final project info PDF file to have more information about the project demo. So if we look at the um, deadlines here, so we're past all of this stuff. So you should have all submitted um, your project set up. And where is the do to do course? I don't have the if you give me a second here, I want to Grab the, or is it in the demo in here? One second. Ah, here we go. Here's the link. Okay, I want this, but I want it in a new window. Perfect. All right, so the next thing that's due is this uh, project initial demo, which is on April 7th, which is about two weeks away. And at that point, you will have had a lot of time to work on the project. And so if it wasn't obvious yet, this project is really important to the course. I'm giving you sort of every possible opportunity to have lots of time to work on the project. And it's going to be, you know, it's worth a significant amount in the course. Um, so please make sure that you're not leaving that until the last minute, because I know that even though I've given you so much time, there's still going to be people coming to me saying, oh, I need more time for this or that, or there's no, there's not going to be any extensions for the final project in the course this year because like half of the course has been about the project. So let's hop over. Um, you're all familiar with this document, but let's go down to the new section, which is on the uh, project initial demo specification. So I talked about this a bit before, but I wanted to have something in writing so that you can refer to it while you're making your initial demo. So for the initial demo, <coughs> excuse me, you must record a narrated, meaning that someone has to talk um, for the video, three to five minute video showing your project progress so far. So you've worked on the project and you've gotten some features implemented. It's not the final, final specification, but this is going to be approximately um, two weeks before the final due date of the project. So you should have a bunch of it working so far. So I would like to see the following features implemented in the demo for both of the project types. So for the StarCraft project, what I want to see is that build orders are at least partially implemented. So you should be able to input a sequence of things that you want to build somehow, either from a text file or hard coded in the code, whatever it is, you have to be able to tell your bot to build a specific things. Um, so build orders are partially implemented with units being built towards a specific army goal. So what this means is that in the video, you'll say, okay, here's the type of build order we've chosen. We're going for tanks or something like that with the Terran race. So we chose that, you know, in our, in our project proposal, we said we were going to build tanks. So here we are and our tanks are being built. Right. That's how far you should you should be getting with this. It's, you know, there's been a significant amount of time so far, so you should be making a significant amount of progress toward that goal. Um, the enemy base is being scouted at the beginning of the match and successfully found. Now, this is, you know, ha has basically already been done for you with the stuff that we've uh, talked about in class so far. So that should be uh, almost automatic or a given to you. Um, I want an attack to take place on the enemy base, ideally doing some damage or even winning a game, right? And so at some point you should say, for example, if you were doing the tank thing, if I have five Marines and two tanks, then I'm going to be attacking at that point. And you send your units toward the enemy base and you do an attack. And please, this is your chance. You can completely cherry pick the video that you record for this, right? So if you still have bugs in your program, um, that's fine, but play over and over and over again until you record an actual good game where none of those bugs happened, right? So this is not the final version of the project. I am not going to be running these 
So I'm kind of taking your word for it, right? But you're going to show me actual gameplay footage of your bot playing against the built-in AI where it builds stuff. You're going to be narrating it, like commenting on, okay, you know, maybe here's a difficulty we had so far or here's a success that we had so far. An attack will take place and it has to do something, right? Your units have to be attacking the enemy units. And if you can win a game, that would be awesome. And whatever your chosen area of specialization was, remember how you had to choose something to, to specialize on? Like, for example, maybe you're going all in on like a Zerg rush or you wanted to build um, like uh, spell casting units or something like that. I want to see that that is at least partially implemented. OK, so you've you've been working toward that so far. And the commentary that I want on top of the video is an explanation of how those things have been accomplished so far and what features you have left to implement for the final project hand in. So what I mean for that is like, as you're, you know, there's a period at the beginning of the game where there's not much happening. So you can say, okay, here's how we implemented build orders. We have a, like a build order object and inside that build order object, there's a vector of the things that we want to build in order. Or maybe we looked at the UAlberta bot source code or we looked at this Stardust source code and we saw how they were doing it and so we borrowed some of those things into our project. I want an, like, an explanation of, of how you've done things so far. And this, this here says three to five minute video. I think that this should be closer to five minutes. Um, but I'm not going to make five minutes a hard cutoff, but it should at least be three minutes to explain and show what you've done so far. And if you want to take, you know, if your game that you're showing takes a full 10 minutes and it's doing a whole bunch of cool stuff, please, by all means, take, take more time than that. But it should be at least this long. Okay. But I don't want anything like an hour long. You know, I, I have to watch like 20 of these things. So make sure it's not that long. So that's for Starcraft. That's not a huge ask because a lot of that has already been done in the sample code that I've given you, okay? So for Minecraft, uh, what I want to see, it may not seem like it's as much as StarCraft, but the StarCraft people had sample code to start with, and so that's why they have to have more done for the, for the demo. So for the Minecraft people, I want to see at least several types of structures that have been implemented. So maybe you have like in your town, you're going to have like one huge building or uh, a bunch of smaller farmhouses or something like that. I want to see those structures being implemented and placed in the world. And something that's important, especially for the final part of the project, is that those structures must have variable parameters so that they're not always identical. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's really easy to build a Minecraft town if all you did was literally hard code the placement of every building, right? So let's say that you have a building and it's 10 blocks long by five blocks wide and it has a window here and it has a roof like this. And if all you do for the demo is copy and paste that building five times, that's not good enough, okay? What you should have is that those buildings have parameters like length, width, height, and you can like pseudo randomly generate a bunch of those buildings, some of them with different widths, different heights, right? I do not want to see just a grid of all the same structure. That is not in any way, shape or form uh, good enough for this, for this project demo. Um, you should start by this point, um, two weeks from now, to have some sort of cohesive town or village structure starting to form. Um, maybe some pathways or roads between houses partially implemented, some decoration, as well as some um, uh, integration with the surrounding landscape, right? So again, for the Minecraft project, let's say, for example, you start in a jungle. I don't want you... Now, you can focus on a particular biome if you want to. That's fine. But I don't want you to just, like, be in a jungle and just, like bulldoze it like a parking lot and then build buildings. You you should actually be placing the buildings in a semi-intelligent way around the landscape, right? Now, for example, if you do have like a, a big hill or a mountain that you want to build something off, sure, you can flatten it a little bit, but I don't want you to just take a chunk of the world and completely flatten it and then just build a grid of structures and call that a town, okay? That's not what this project is about. And... I want you to explain how you have tackled the four GDMC categories so far 
and what you have left to do and what you plan to specialize on. So for example, um, one really good example from a previous year's project is that this team, um, they had a village which was protected by like a Great Wall of China type structure, right? So they had a huge wall going around their entire village and it was really well done. And then they had the town inside that and they had some guard posts and towers and stuff. So their specialization was in making sure that that wall like made sense and blended into the landscape and stuff like that. So this is what I want to see. Uh, it's still, you know, April 7th is still about two weeks away. So if you have not started this yet, you really have to start this now. Okay. There will be almost no possible excuse for not having the project done on time especially with all of the deadlines and pushbacks and, and leniency that I've been giving with the project. So please make sure that, um, that, that, is, that, that this is going to be done for the demo due date. And uh, what I want to see in your GitHub is over here, the demo folder, okay? So if, again, this folder is used to submit your code as it was at the time of the demo. Okay, so I'm, you're going to be submitting your code. Now, we are not going to be compiling or running that code. So don't worry if like half the time you run it, it's crashing or whatever. Just please, oh, before I get into this, I do want to see like a screen recording of your Minecraft village being generated, right? So you're going to start Minecraft. You're going to be flying around in creative mode or whatever. And then you're going to press a button somewhere that launches your program so I can see your village being generated and you are narrating on how that's being done so far. So that's that's the narration part for Minecraft. And I actually want to see that being done in a video, not just screenshots of a semi-completed town. Okay, I want to see it being built. That's the whole point of, of this thing. Okay. Then you'll come out here and if you did StarCraft, you'll put your source code in here. If you did Minecraft, you'll put your source code in here and you'll delete the other folder. So if you did Minecraft, there'll be no StarCraft or README here. You'll just have the Minecraft folder. Cool. And uh, then what we'll do is probably, you know, the, the day of the 8th. So on the next morning, we'll be checking and, and marking your stuff. So please make sure that it is in on time. And if you have any questions, if you're out there in the chat, feel free to ask and I will happily answer them now or you can post them in the uh, various help channels on the Discord and I will answer those after class time. So that's just, I wanted to update you on exactly what I wanted to see for the demo. And this, is, this should essentially be at least a half working project so far. It's not just, hey, we like, you know, there's units moving or there's a building. This should be a significant amount, a significant amount of progress towards your project. So please keep that in mind and it will be marked as such. All right. So, um, the next thing that I wanted to show is some of the, uh, solutions for assignment three. So I have briefly looked at these, but I kind of wanted to, uh, to, uh, how, how do I say this? Kind of wanted to be surprised by things. So I just, I ran them to make sure they didn't crash, but I haven't thoroughly inspected them yet. All right. So here we go. I have these over on the other, um, table. This one here is called BFS. So, so I had the, um, the marker went through and looked at all of these and then sort of gave them, a um, a name or like described what they're doing. So I have the, the descriptions of what it is. And so this is Yunus Hassan and the marker said BFS for mineral spawns. So let's see uh, what we have here. So let's go to a planet where we have, uh, a, or a star system where we have a bunch of planets. Okay. Here we have a, what did I just do? I just clicked a button. Oops. I don't know what happened. I think I just closed it somehow. So here, oh, that's cool. So most abundant mineral found gold. Okay. So this, this team did sort of resource spawning on the planets. So that's pretty neat. We've got uh, our planet with the um, terrain that was generated as well as I believe these are the mineral structures. So if you are, if you are this group, 
So if any time, if at any time I show something and the group is out there in the chat, just please like type or say hi or explain what you did, and I'll I'll read out what you did. So this is pretty cool. Um, let's go to another. I want to find kind of a larger planet. There we go. Ah, that's really neat. So it looks like they did um, this resource as the bonus feature, and they went with the cellular automata for the planet generation. That's pretty cool. Alrighty. Oh, and let's see. I want to kind of look at planet names as well. I know they maybe they didn't do... Um, so the star systems looks like it's two words. Sort of like Latin words for their star system. For, for, the, for the name of their stars. Oh, cool. So we have diamond here. So we probably have silver, gold, and diamond. And so the most abundant one on this planet is diamond. That's cool. All right. So this one says, find planet quest and moon render. All right. So what does that mean? I'm not sure, but we'll see. All right. Planet to find. Biome void. Size small. Moons less than one in a hot star system. Okay. So let's... Ah, that's cool. All right, so let's click on. Oh, I see. Yeah, they've moved it over here. So let me, um... yeah, you're right. Let me move the, the face cam. Perfect. Good idea. All right, so now we are looking for a particular planet. So I don't know. Biome void. Oh, this is cool. So this is really neat. They have a, uh, they did Perlin noise, obviously, for their planet terrain. And there are three moons, and it looks like these moons are rotating here. So they're orbiting the planet. This assignment is from, from my group. Cool. So if this is from your group, how do I know what the biome is? Can you explain that to me? Because I haven't read the readme file from this. I really like the uh, terrain generation. The terrain generation is really well done. You've got some nice parameters being chosen here. So it looks like ice and water. Vine compilations 466. I like this planet name. That's pretty good. Oops, 865. Are these like YouTube video names? How did you how did you do the planet names for this one? This is I really like the Perlin noise for this one. How did you just decide on the uh So the biomes are all colored like Minecraft, okay? So how do I find a void biome? Do I am I just looking around here? So moons less than 1. So does that mean zero moons I have to find in a hot star system? Okay. A hot star system. What would a hot star system be? Hot is probably yellow, blue, blue's blue's hot. I don't know. I may not be able to spend enough time on the the game itself. Oh, that's neat. There's the uh the moons. Cool. I kind of want to show off the game but I don't know if I can find this in time truth be told these names I opened a google doc called a ton of words and wrote a bunch of garbage and the star system names were prefix plus adjective plus vague space word ah, that's cool garden of Wheaton nice hot is closer to white I believe all right let's see this one if this is void, no. All right, I, I, I'm not going to play the whole game, but that's really cool that you had that in there. I assume that the points goes up, sort of like a GeoGuessr type game. This one is called, um, oh, and that was Abraham Riggs, by the way. Here we have Banjuri Coffee, and this is a Perlin noise generation. Oh, this is cool. It's got like a sort of like cyberpunk feel to the planet. So we have different colors in the planet. Let's choose a uh, different one. I like the color scheme here. I don't know if that's random or not. 
Let's try and find some bigger planets. Oh, here's a massive planet. Cool. So this is being done with Perlin noise. This is a very dark planet. All right. So let's see if we can figure out how these planet names. It looks like, okay, so there's two words. Is there any pattern to the words? Alpha Pikachu. Maggi Giovanni. Okay. Giorno Squarepants. All right. I think I think I see a, a little bit of a, a pattern. Pikachu Genesis. Planet Tony Stark. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was randomly generated, but I've seen that name before. It's pretty fun. All right. The next one, Cumpstone Leto, Perlin and Water Levels. Alrighty, so let's see here. Let's find a planet or a star with some planets. Ooh, that's fancy. That's fancy Perlin noise. I like the sort of gradient on the Perlin noise here. Almost looks like clouds. So it said water levels. I'm guessing that these things may be the water levels. I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'm seeing what looks like a lot of clouds, not much terrain. But the Perlin noise is really well done. I like the set of parameters for this. I'll turn off the grid. Yeah, turning off the grid helps a lot. That's really neat. I like that Perlin noise. See if we can find another big one here. Ah, there we go. Really cool. Nice job on that one. Here we have a uh, Fowler trim, Perlin with elevation, the TA says. All right, let's have a look at this. Oh, neat. So we've got kind of a, like an elevation map to this. <clears throat> That's really cool. So we've got land, what looks like mountains, so let's go from the bottom up. So we've got like deep sea, sea, close to shore. We've got sand on, along the shoreline and then grass and then mountains and then snow. That's really cool. I, I really like that. That elevation like really adds a lot, I think, to the Perlin, to, to the Perlin noise and the look and feel of the planets. Let's find a really big planet. Oh, that's neat. So... The planet's color is the color of the ground on the planet. Ah, cool. I like it. That's really well done. Awesome. All right, next one. We have Hawk and Hawk. Planet names match biome. That's cool. So let's go in here. This is Beta, okay, Beta Jet is the name, okay. Snow Frieza. Cool. So here we've got a biome that's like, uh, I guess, snow-based with some land. So that's called Snow Frieza. Snow Namek. So I see a uh, Dragon Ball um, pattern coming here. Lava Frieza. So we've got names of people and places from... Uh, the Dragon Ball series. Cool. Some nice tunnels going on on this planet. An Ice Vegeta. Nice. I like that. Cool. And we have one more here. So this isn't to say that like these are better done than ones that haven't been shown. These are just the ones I, I told the, the TA to pick out like eight or ten of the ones that got um, good bonus marks. And so these are the ones that I found. All right. And Shepard and Nguyen. This is Twinkle and Meteorite. So let's see. Oh, that's cool. So we've got a, a twinkle going to the stars here. Some based on some sort of time component, I assume. And said there are meteorites. So let's have a look. I assume the meteorites are probably... Um, oh, that twinkle effect is cool when you zoom out. That's really neat. Rip my bitrate though, probably. All right, so let's see. Let's find a place here with some planets. Here we've got a bit of a bigger planet. And all right, so the meteorites, I think that's what I'm seeing here. Maybe there's not a lot of contrast. Let me go to a different... Ah, here we go. 
So yeah, the meteorites are on the planets themselves. That's cool. So these were probably randomly generated with the seed. Let's just see. So if I um, come out and then go back in, the meteorites are in the same place. That's really cool. So let's uh, pan around and we'll find another star system. And here we have some green meteorites on the planet. This is probably pretty close to like what actually happens, right? How our planets are formed. Just a bunch of crazy rocks hitting us over, over the ages. And here we have some gray meteorites. That's really cool. Nice work to everyone on assignment three. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy looking at the, the, the assignments that had some of the, um, the nicer bonus features because, you know, that's how you learn is going, is doing the bonus stuff in my opinion. Cool. So that's, that's it. I, I said this was going to be a really quick, quick one. Um, next week, starting next week, we have the last four, um, lectures are going to be sort of guest interview lectures. I think they're going to be really fun. Uh, we're going to have quizzes on the contents of those lectures and, uh, there will be a quiz out about, um, some stuff that we have talked about recently. Um, at 5 p.m. today. So in about an hour and a half, that quiz will be available. And yeah, that's it. So make sure, please, don't wait until the last minute to do the demo. It's important. And anything you do for the demo is stuff that you will have done for the final hand-in as well, right? So don't leave it until the last minute, if at all possible. Okay, so that was just sort of a quick uh, information session lecture, and we'll get back into more hardcore information starting uh, on Tuesday, where we're going to be talking to Dan Gant. So DG here is Dan Gant. He's one of the premier StarCraft bot creators of the last few years. So we'll talk to, to Dan about his, uh, his bot uh, Purple Wave and uh, how he has done that and how he's continued to be successful uh, throughout the years. All right. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you next time.